the power query editor we will take a look at uh, how to work with power query editor and using power query editor how we can perform the data cleaning or formatting and how we can remove the data how we can format the data how we can split the columns how we can filter the data how we can remove the duplicate records or if you want to keep the duplicate records how we can keep it how you can remove the duplicate records and how we can do discretization what is discretization kind of binning bucketing group creating group for example you have a column called salary column you want and uh, let's say you have your customer base is 10000 you have 10000 customers uh, they are purchasing the products from your website but you want to do, do uh, customer profiling in order to do customer profiling what you are doing is you are creating a new column called customer type the customer type column what you are doing doing what you are going to do is you are going to uh do some kind of bucketing so our bucketing or binning you are going to do it what do you mean the bucketing or binning you are going to classify your customers as high income customer group low income customer group and middle income customer group okay how do you do this one based on the income salary those people are getting more than 3 lakhs take home salary per month they are high income group people those employees are getting salary let's you know between one to ten middle income so those are getting less than 50000 salary they are low income group people or less than 1 lakh they are low income group people so in order to classify the data we need to have an additional column customer type or something like that but here which column you use it as a basis salary column you just check the you write the condition if the salary is greater than 3 lakhs and they are high income group those people salaries between 1 to 2 lakh they are middle income those are getting less than 1 lakh they are low income group people so salary column you are using it and you, you define the condition to classify the customers as high medium low income group people so that is what your discretization and next one is merging the data sets in the real world scenario we don't get the data everything in a single file let's say your customer says the data is available only in comma separated files and excel files you they don't store the data in your sql server or json or any other type they use only plain comma separated value files or text files or they are using only the excel files fine but um you the data the entire data they, they don't store it in a single excel file every day sales data they they store it in a, a daily basis they store the data in a separate separate excel file day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 day 6 day 7 every monday they want to consult they want to merge all the seven days data and then they want to uh, do some kind of aggregation they want to summarize the data for every once in a week in that case you need to combine all the data into single file and in order to do it sometimes you'll have to use left outer join right out right outer join based on the reporting requirement you need to do different types of joins that is what you do it as part of merging the data sets and next one is the appending the data sets the same thing uh, all the seven days data you append one after another day one just under the day 1 you put day 2 data and then day 3 day 4 day 5 you keep append all the data so that all the seven days data will be in a single file but here it is little bit different uh, you need to do some kind of left out to join later we'll explain it later don't worry and also we do some kind of data imputation apart from all these things task we do data imputation what is data imputation sometimes you know data uh set you will find missing values for example you are working for an insurance company uh, auto insurance company okay and uh, the customers are paying paying premium every month because if they meet with any, any uncertainty or accident or something like that right they want to claim it back with you because life is uncertain any time anything can happen right so if something goes wrong they can come back to the insurance company and they can hey i paid you premium 
and you know this uh, spot somebody came and banged my car or somebody came and banged my expensive luxury car i own lamborghini you just say you know for example okay uh, if somebody came and banged my car it is very expensive car and it you know the door got damaged okay so they can go back and claim with the insurance company but insurance company uh, in order to uh, give their policy they need to store all the important data for example determine the premium amount for your car your car is very expensive one and it's a brand new car and what is the uh, sum assured how much you are going to uh, pay for the policy in total and um, and what is the age of the car what is the experience of the driver and brand car brand all these data should be there and importantly the age of the car should also be there there is a column called age there the age of the car should also be there the car is too old uh, you know the chances are that developing problem is um, you know the more frequently it can develop the problem like human the older people they develop more health problems in the in the case of healthcare also same thing age is very important based on the age only they determine the premium amount if the age has missing value in it sometimes what we do is we will remove the data or we will go back and ask the customers we phone them ask them sir all the details are there your age is not there or age of your vehicle is not there when did you buy supposing you are not able to access the customer you are not customer uh, is not picking up but you need to do analysis so how do you do in that case what we do is we will replace the blank value with some value that we will discuss it later okay so that is what re- at this moment you just think replacing the missing value with some meaningful data that is called your data imputation see these names uh, appears to be strange discretization and data imputation end of the day what we do is nothing very simple now you understood right so here we do binning here we do some kind of uh, replacing the missing value with some value that is called data imputation and sometimes we create the derived columns based on the existing columns we create the new columns when do we create the new columns see in your order data set or invoice data set you have the order id uh, or invoice number invoice date customer uh, id and product id category id all these things are there and you have importantly the quantity unit sold and price and sales amount the sales value you have a column called sales the price into quantity let's assume that the simple for simplicity say it right price into quantity will give you the sales for that invoice how much we invoiced uh, how much money we uh, you know we we uh, generated uh, each invoices for that you have column called sales okay the manager has given you this data but he wants you to find out the profit made by made profit by each invoice so in that case you don't have a column called profit we call it as a margin okay so we don't have a we don't see a, a column called margin is available in the data set so in that case what i do is i will take my sales column and i use some formula sales selling price minus cost price is your profit simple example okay selling price minus cost price is your profit you just see that okay so this is the formula i should use it to create a new column but for to create this new column already the selling price is available in my data set and the cost price is also available in my data set so selling price uh minus the cost price is my profit right based on these two columns which already exists in your table you are you know based on these two columns you are going to create a new column called your profit which is nothing but your margin so this is called your derived column sometimes we create a new columns based on the existing columns and then we do aggregation what is aggregation hey i don't want to see the day to day sales tell me uh the last two quarters what is the sales but i want quarter by quarter sales so quarter 1 quarter 2 sales to be you know uh, compared so in that case quarter 1 or uh, january through march right till march we aggregate all the we total the entire data what is the total so quarter 1 so this is the sales total sales we made which are 5 million dollar sales we made in quarter 1 
in quarter two we made 5.3 million sales a million dollar sales we made it we want the consolidated data instead of seeing day to day sales value figure i want to see each quarter what is the total sales that is the figure i'm interested so that i can compare quarter on so compared to this quarter compared with my last quarter uh, in this quarter did i sell did i sell more number of products or did i sell more make more revenue or something like that, right so quarter on so you do some kind of aggregation use some function use minimum function maximum function count function these are the functions you will use it to perform data aggregation and finally pivoting pivoting is if you want to convert the columns into rows and pivoting is the rows into columns that is called your pivoting so these are the commonly used data transformation we transform the data uh, you know with these uh, different uh, categories okay under these different categories we transform the data okay see uh, to develop a report or dashboard what do you need it what do you need it data right you need to have the data without data can you create a report or dashboard it's not possible the bare minimum thing is data should be there yes as a manager i've given you the data but how good the data is is it really um, in the usable format no the data is not in the usable for example format it requires formatting what is formatting the date column supposed to be in the date data type but uh, the power bi when it loaded the data it assigned at the time of loading the it assigned the uh, the order date column as text data type i need to convert that as a date data type how can i do that so i have to do that only then i can do some kind of date related transformations or date related analytics i can do it okay so these are the things that we do it as part of uh, using power this is a common transformation data transformation we do it and we will try to we already ex you know explore uh, the couple of um, data transformations and also in power query editor there are a lot of features are available using which um, you can do pivoting and unpivoting without doing too much of heavy lifting okay and appending data sets everything just by pointing and clicking it you can do merging appending everything you can do it so now we have um, 10 15 more minutes are there time okay what we will do is enough talking we will jump into the power query desktop and then we will take a look at how we can do the data transformation we have already seen how to do the data transformation right we go to the power query editor how do we do that so look here these are the tables that i loaded yesterday okay and what i do is i just go to the transform data now i have shown you how to reuse the steps that you applied it in other report into some other report right i would suggest you please uh, watch my daily video and practice it see today you know abhijit uh, he completed his assignment given by the the interviewer but still he is struggling here and there though he st spent a lot of time in going through my videos and uh, you know understand the concepts everything when it comes to hands on he is struggling so here uh, what we are interested is uh, sales fact uh, did i show you that one advanced editor okay these tables are from my sql server and what i will do is i will redo the thing one more time for you people to remember it so currently i am using power query editor look here uh, one second this is my power query editor can you see that here yes this is my power query editor and here what i do is here it here also you can instead of using get data all the time using power query also you can import the data you can load the data click on the new source and here i'm going to the text csv
sales w04.csv click on open so here uh, in the data preview window it shows the data that are available as part of my sales w04.csv and but here uh, in the data preview window itself i can make out the column ids so you are uh, the column names are displayed in the row id the row ideally the row id should come here order id should come here there are some uh, you know we need to change the row id into column so row header into column header okay currently the row header uh, in the row it shows the column names instead it should show in the column header right so there is some problem here click on okay Okay, this uh, this file data got loaded successfully into my Power BI desktop and Power Query editor. Also, I can see it, but the problem is here: the column one, column two is there. It is not meaningful, right? Uh, once you develop, or even when you create any chart, you will get confused. What is column one? What is column four? And all, right? So in this case, click on Transform Ribbon, and here you have option to use first two as headers. Click on Use first two as headers. So that row ID order ID will, will become this one. But since uh, the above this one, we have blank space, still it is showing that. Do it one more time. So boom. So now the row I row header became the column header. Each column has the meaningful name in it here. Good. Fine. So we did one transformation. What we did? Use first two as well. We clicked it twice, hence uh, we are able to see a proper naming uh, for naming convention for each column, right? So okay, good. So this is row, but I don't need the row dot ID for my report to generate my report. I don't need a row ID. I just remove this one. Removing a column is also one of the data transformation. And ship date, order date columns are there. In the order date column. Uh, I could see that for each column, uh, just before each column name, you can see the ABC something like that. So ABC or uh, somewhere you will find 1.2, see 123, 123 is whole number, 1 point is decimal number. I just already discussed with you all, right? So anyhow, I will do it one more time. So your order ID, I want to change this a date data type. So here ABC, Power BI, what it did so while loading this data it assigned the text data type for the sorry the order date order date it assigned the text data type. ideally this one supposed to be date data type but here it shows the uh, uh it assigned the text data type i need to format this order date column as a date data type. how can i do that one way is just click on this icon when you click on this icon it display all the data types that are available as part of your Power Query Editor. You can see it here. You have a decimal number, fixed decimal number, whole number, percentage, date, time, date, time, all the things. So if you want to convert the date, you can do it. Time. But when I click the date, it will get converted date. But before I select this option, I wanted to take a quick look at the data. So I can see that there is a problem with the way how the data got stored here. But when I look at each and every value of this column, the data got stored in the month date year format it's a us date for us format in us they store the date in the form of month date and year first they store the month and then the date and then year this is us date format okay all the data in this column i could say month date year only they stored but the problem is instead of specifying forward slash to separate uh, the month date year in all the values, somewhere they use typhoon, somewhere they use the forward slash. Either I should convert all these separator like a forward slash as hyphen, or I should convert, replace the for the hyphen as forward slash. But we need a separator, either hyphen or forward slash, but we don't want the mix of these two things. Okay, and if I consistently change, for example, uh, if I replace all the iPhone by this forward slash, then the values in this column will be in the proper format, consistent format. And then if I go and change the, if I click on this date, 
it will get kind of a date data type so now what i do is i just keep the cursor over this order date column and when i right click on it we have an option called replace values here i go and say replace the iphone by forward slash click on it look here all the iphone got replaced with forward slash and if i go and change the date it will get converted but instead of clicking on this you click on using locale this is only for the date column and here wait for some time ideally uh, yeah so there is a suggestion to microsoft right so instead of showing the cursor mm -hmm. something the arrow mark here right uh, they can use some a uh, loading icon it is being loaded something that is people will get confused so date data type is date and then english united states because this is a month date year format and you need to explicitly specify hey this is a date data type this column don't uh, assign a text data type and replace the text data by date and also it should be in the united states format click on okay super it got converted as a date data type look here you can see the calendar icon along with the order date this column we are able to successfully format it as a date data type after doing some cleaning right what kind of cleaning we replace the iphone by forward slash now you don't ask me you replace the iphone by forward slash and then you convert as a, a date data type but why it still shows iphone okay so now it consistently shows everything in this because it's in a us date format because of it shows like this okay and similarly ship date you can do it and the next one is uh, the binning part okay what i do is yeah we will do formatting for sales column also because in the sales column sales is a quantitative variable it's a numeric variable but unfortunately we can see that you know uh, see that power bi assign the text data type to the sales column so what why it assign text data type to the quantitative variable if you are wondering and we need to do a lot of uh, research on this thank god in my first record in the first value itself i can see that the sales value got prefixed with dollar dollar is kind of a text value if you mix text along with any value it will consider this as a text data type you take any programming language if you put a text with the numeric value it will become a text data entire data will become a text data type because text has the highest precedence over other data type so now what i have to do is now i need to remove the dollar and then i i need to convert this as a decimal data type so i just keep the cursor over here right click on it and i'm going to replace the values dollar and then replace with find a dollar and then replace it with blank value wherever dollar is there it replaces it with the blank value now my dollar has gone but i have if i scroll down little bit here i can see the any ideally what you do is you click on this down arrow to get a quick glimpse of what data you have in it here okay so here here also it is not showing anything but if you move up here you don't see anything related to any right so, and uh, sometimes you'll have to scroll down and you can see any what is any not available which means in this column in my data file i have a blank values here that's the reason why power bi what it does is while loading the data wherever it finds the empty values it replaces the empty values by any so i need to give some meaningful value here before i convert this as a decimal data type so what i do is i right click on it replace values find out any wherever any is there replace it any by zero i just click on okay my all my any become zero look here it's all zero right so cool and i now i am all set to change the data but without replacing the any by zero and if you go and if you rush and convert as a decimal number it will put error for the any okay so that's the reason why make sure that you are replacing the any by zero or something a blank well so ideally you can use zero okay 
since sales is a quantitative variable it is a it will hold the decimal value right not a whole number and so i'm going to select the data type as decimal number now it got converted as a quantitative variable it is a it is of decimal type so 1.2 if you see this one it will give you an idea okay this is a decimal data type and the 1 2 3 is a whole number quantity is a whole number and similarly you can see everything here and now my thing is uh, i just want to go and see the discount uh, do we have anything like um profit discount we don't have the price column here and uh, discount profit okay and uh, okay so what i want to do is now i am going to classify or i want to do some discretization i want to classify this data into three classes so that is what binning i discussed it uh that when probably you can we will continue it in the next session because it will take another 10 to 15 minutes time it's already 3:30 so you might have uh, exhausted because continuously one and a half hour i've been talking so what you do is uh, today session you watch it i will share this file also you start practice it every day you practice it because most of you do not have programming but practice it a very simple one don't postpone it please and i want questions from you at least every alternate days i should be in a position to respond to you during my lunch time between 12:30 to 3:30 but when you send the questions make sure that you are sending the you know your questions are reasonable you you have every liberty to go and do googling and try to solve it on your own when you try to solve it on your own you will not forget it that is the advantage it's not that you know don't disturb me okay so when you try to solve the problem on your own you will learn many things not only even your personal life you have experienced right so that is sometimes you need experts suggestions even after that if you cannot solve it come back to me i'll help you don't worry okay i'll share this file uh, okay it sounds good right fine any questions so far okay since you don't have any questions i'm going to wrap up the session we'll share the video shortly shortly after some time and probably after 30 minutes you can view my video and you have any questions so feel free to uh, send a whatsapp message okay and practice it on a daily basis when it comes to software every day you have to practice it even if i lose touch with power bi let's say you know one month if i don't touch it next month it will be some i'll forget the navigation like here and there the navigation will be very simple don't worry initially you will you might you know find it little bit difficulty but practice it practice you just keep that only one thing in mind this is not a rocket science even a 10th stand when a 10th standard student can also learn this why can't i learn it? you develop that attitude you can definitely uh, do wonders all right i'm going to wrap up the session now okay see you next week